Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying the back to school. <laughs> I know there's all these mums and dads that are giving a sigh of relief. Kids are back to school. <laughs> I remember those days. So I thought it would be fitting to do a back to school. This one's back to school for fairies too. Sorry. And we're going to be playing in my uh, just very inexpensive sketchbook journal. It isn't a watercolor uh, paper. It's just plain sketchbook paper. It's not too bad. It's a, a very uh, cheap one. Um, don't even know if I can tell you what kind it is because there's nothing written on it. I think I got like three for $15 or something like that. It was some ridiculous price so I thought I would try it and voila they're actually pretty good. And I think there's 200 pages in this one. So 400 if you count both sides. So it's getting pretty chunky. So I have this cute little uh, fairy that I'm going to be doing. Fairy gnome, whatever, sprite, I don't know. <laughs> she lives in the woods. and. Uh, I'm going to do kind of a nature look to it. Uh, I'm just looking for my watercolor brushes. I've been doing a lot of uh, acrylic painting in the past few days. So this one. So, uh, sorry, I should have had this all found out before I started but I can oh there it is okay I love these these are my favorite they're the uh, silver black velvet and you can get them in many sizes uh, you can even get them in flat but I love the point on them and they're just the right spring for watercolor not too uh, soft that it sticks in one position uh, it comes back to a shape so that's what I like about them and I'm going to use this is a number six and this one is a number eight and of course all uh, watercolor brushes acrylic brushes manufacturers I don't know why but they don't have a, a standard size for everybody they're all different but I do like these ones so this was going to kind of be very loose and atmospheric I guess you could say so I want to let's start off with the fairy uh, herself and of course she's going to be in different greens because fairies got to be in green at least my fairies do so I have some green on my palette here already and I want to keep this fairly, not too bright, kind of muted. And uh, I, again, this is just uh, plain sketchbook paper. So I'm going to go wet into wet, or wet onto dry, meaning my brush is wet on dry paper. And just using the very tip. I'm going to put in that little hat of hers. It's cute. And then while it's still wet, I can put in a little bit of a darker green for those areas that uh, would be a little more shaded, like along the sides here. It would be just a tad. You don't have to be exact, but I think it would be a little bit darker 
like it a little bit muted too, just not a straight color. So you can get into maybe some ochre here. That might look nice with this uh, color green. So let's put a little ochre in there. Give it a little bit of dimension. A little more interest. And she's going to have uh, probably reddish auburn maybe hair. And I'm going to give her highlights. So because my paper is already kind of a beigey color, I can leave some of that as is for highlights. Now you could also use, uh, as we use the sienna for this too. Uh, you could also use color pencil if you wanna do that or just give this a try. Little ears, we'll leave those, make them a little bit lighter. So th this is kind of the darker area right here, but there'd be little bits that you would see that would be darker along the sides here. And I'm just using the very tip of my brush. And take your time. Enjoy what you're doing. Just kind of skipping through the woods. So I'm going to just put a base coat of this color on. And then I can I can add whatever color I want. Darken areas or Maybe make her the ends of her hair a little darker. Who knows? What do fairy hairs look like? Do they have cool streaks in their hair? <laughs> Maybe. But I'm just going to do this for now. And then we'll add a little bit more to it. That. Uh, looks pretty good. All right. And while that's drying, let's start on the cloak. Well, just that that's what I like to do is I'll start somewhere and then go to a totally opposite area so that the water's of both uh, types of color don't intermingle because that's what happens is you touch this green area with this uh, color, it's going to take off into your green area. So you kind of have to watch what you're doing there. So just go back and forth. So I'm going to keep this green here. Maybe add a little bit more color to that. Be a little darker uh, under here where her chin is. And um, maybe the sun's on one side. So we'll brighten it up a little bit on this side. So this part of the painting, a little sketch, is kind of a little bit more detailed, so to speak, not terribly detailed, but it's going to show a little bit more um, defined, I guess you could say, uh, areas in it. Whereas the background is going to be very loose and flowy, kind of. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. So she'll have this dark area right in here. that. Her sleeve will be a little darker. Now, I'm not worried if this bleeds into the other too much because it's the same same color basically. I'll put a little bit more concentration of 
pigment in there so it's nice and dark, maybe up here too. So that would be fairly dark under her chin. And a little bit lighter coming down the lapel. It's cute. Alrighty. Take that down there. And I think I'm going to do her, her dress a little bit muted, but with some, maybe some, uh, what is this color? This one is indigo. You could use a Payne gray, Payne's gray too, if you want. Though so I'm going to just wet the area this time. And then my brush water is uh, a little bit on the contaminated side, so it's showing it's a little bit blue. But that's perfect for what I'm doing. So I'm not too worried about that. And we'll put in the little area there. And I, want, I think I'll, I missed that spot. So on her sleeve there is green. So let's put that green back in. Like that. Cute. And then I want to take some, a uh, little bit, more concentrated uh, pigment from the indigo. And we'll just dab on the inside part. So this is kind of underneath, you're seeing the back part of her dress here a little bit. And then I want it to bleed into the very edge. So it's still wet, so it's going to bleed up because indigo is very, very strong color. And then I can also add a little bit as uh, shadow areas and little um, wrinkles, folds in the in the dress. Maybe some little polka dots here and there. I don't know. Make it up. Give her flowers or whatever you want on her dress. I think that's cute. Okay. And maybe she has a little bit of little princess, what do they call that? Um, waistband, but it's up high. There's a name for that. It's been so long since I've sewn. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, so we'll let that dry. And then let's get some more of that green. And I want a little bit more concentrated. And we're going to put little stripes in her socks. So... She has these little striped socks on. Maybe they're falling down. I don't know. A little wonky. This uh, one leg's behind the other one, so it... Uh, be a little bit on in shadow so what we can do is take a little bit of, of uh, that indigo and just give a light coat over top of that so it's a little bit shaded and right in here too so back here would be just a bit 
a little bit more darker. And give her little shoes. I'm going to keep them in the indigo also. So we're kind of seeing the tip of her shoe here. Like that. And let's see, maybe a little darker. It's a little bit more of that indigo right in here. Even though this is still a little bit wet, I'm going to just where the underneath of her, her dress is. I want that fairly dark just so that you can tell the difference that it's under. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of that indigo on my brush again. And this time I want to put a little bit of it in here over top of the green to darken and shade that one area. And right in here too. A little bit darker like that and I think her little sleeve I'm going to darken too so it's more separate like that a little bit in here by her cheek that was fairly dark. Looks good. A little bit of a whoops in there. Oh well. All right, now let's do her face. So her face is going to be, uh, we're going to take some of this raw Vienna. And some red. Uh, let's see, maybe magenta. That'll pinken it up. And... Hmm. What else? I think I'm going to make it a little bit. There. Though that's still, I want it fairly light. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Magenta again. Just play with it until you get the right color you want. And I'm just going to go right over top. Don't forget to do inside the hairline. And down the sides, her neck, her ear. Any pooling, well, best to put it where the eye is. Or in the cheek area here, just along the bottom. That, we'll see how it, how it uh, dries. A lot of times you have to go back. And then in the arm. So this is a very simple one. Her legs. Don't forget she has socks on. So I'm just going to go right over top. So it's all one color. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to take a hair dryer or heat gun and dry this up. You want it really good and dry if you're going to put any more water on there because this is just sketchbook paper, so uh, it only holds so much um, water and then it starts to pill, so that's not fun. All right, so you can see that there's some light areas, so uh, you could take a gouache if you want to lighten some areas or colored pencil. I'm just going to uh, get this light color here that I had here. It's kind of a brownish color. I'm just going to put some of this in the uh, hair here just so that it's not so bright. And I'm going to take that uh, raw sienna again. And add a little bit of burnt sienna with it. I want it a little darker. And now I can take just, uh, it's dry, so I can take some of this and just streak it up where you might see a little bit of a darker um, fold in the hair or whatever. Don't have to do the whole, the whole thing, but you will see some of that. And usually darker around the sides or underneath the, the, the rim of the hat. And then you can just, I'm mostly concentrating on the bottom of the hair, these little tufts of hair, because that's where the shadow would be, because this is a darker color. So you don't have to do it all, but around the ear, will probably be a lot darker by the neck. Like that. And then I'm just going to do a little bit around the edge of the hat here. Like that. And maybe a few little tufts going down. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and her face is uh, dry, so now you can take a little bit of that. You could use actually the same color here that we did her hair and just add a little bit of magenta to it. So it's a little more of a rosy, and then you can give her the little rosiness to her face so around the edge here by her cheeks and around the inside of her eye there it would be a little bit darker and then you can take a wet brush and just go up against the edge of that. A lot of times you just throw some more on there. Soften it. I like to soften the edges. Ah. She 
should have a little bit darker in here. So I'm just going to darken the skin a little bit. Just around the hairline there, there'd be a little bit of a shadow. A little more pink in the cheek. And I'm going to just do her little mouth here with the same color. Now, not terribly uh, defined, but just a bit. And her neck would be much darker. So you could actually take some of this um, blue um, and mix it with that sienna color and that'll gray it down and just underneath here you could put that in and her ears inside her ears would be a little bit darker now we can do her um, hands and legs and arms so I'm going to make up a little bit more of that pinkish color and we'd have her knee here Just gonna blend it out a little bit. And a little bit of that darker color. So that was the uh, indigo with the uh, Yana color. And this leg's back. So it's um, casting a shadow from the dress. And it's actually quite shadowed right down to the sock. And a little bit in here. This one is a little bit lighter because it's she's stepping forward with this leg. So it's a little lighter. Comes down like that. I can't take away, so it's a little more difficult on this type of paper. So let's do some of this on her arm. So her arm's kind of going forward a little bit, so there'd be a little bit of a shadow in there and a little bit right there by the wrist and her thumb would be shadowed like that and I want it soft so let's just soften that edge up a little bit and then a little bit of that umber again just on the very top. Like that. Okay, and then this one, that rosy color, so her thumb would be in shadow. And then it goes around her fingers here. A little bit on the wrist here, there. And then right in here by the uh, edge of her sleeve. That. And then just a bit of that indigo right on the very top. Kind of a dirty color when it mixes, but it's a good shadow color. Okay. And then let's dry that.
All right. So her eyes are, I'm going to just do them a really dark brown. Maybe mix that indigo with, I'm going to make them a gray color, I guess. And just a really shadowed area on the top. And then right in the corner there a little bit like that. And just the leave a little bit of a highlight that. And then a very, very light, mm, could almost, yeah, she's got that. We'll make her eyebrows a little bit pale. Like that. Not much. She's young. And I want a little bit of that same color on the bottom of her nose. And I think right under her little lip. I think I want a little bit more color there. Now you could, this is very small, so you could actually just use colored pencils and do little touch-ups. Uh, let's give her a little brighter lip. Like that. Okay. Yeah, she's looking pretty good. All right, so we can also um, darken that hair even more, but um, not as much this time. So you want it darker, but don't put as many streaks in. So we're concentrating more on the real dark depth. This is, needs to be even darker. A little bit of indigo and uh, uh, what is it? Burnt sienna. It's right in here. Just where you think that you have these really dark shadows. A few little taps here and there. Right in here. That. Behind her ear would be fairly dark. There. That. Yeah, that looks better. 
And well, let's darken some of these green areas a little bit more. So I'm just taking this dark green appetite genuine here. Just where there'd be a little bit of a shadow. Some of these areas here. Along the edge of her coat. And I'm going to take a clean brush and just wet the area. To get it to buzz out a little bit so it's not so uh, harsh. And make this a little bit darker in there. By your neck because that would be a lot darker. Little areas. Just take your clean water and soften those edges up a little bit if you want. And maybe a little bit on the hat too, on the sides here. Be darker. And a little bit of that indigo. It's a little bit of brown in it, just to gray it up just slightly. And I want this for, to darken this again, a little bit more. Uh, a little bit of a darker edge in there. That looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. So we'll let that be for now. Uh, we'll probably come back and touch up a few little areas, but it looks pretty good for now. So now I want to do the background. So I'm going to get a bigger brush. And we have this old type of tree here in the forest. Gnarly old. Well, they're elves, so <laughs> they're small. Well, it may look like a giant. tree but let's put a little bit of this brownish color in here and a little bit of green did have a little bit of moss probably growing in the bits and pieces because they're elves so it's probably all kinds of different things growing we wouldn't notice because we're big let's put some brown in here a little bit of dark around the feet so I'm just going in with uh, pure indigo let's put a little bit of shadow around the feet there. Take our water and let it seep. It's 
some green. And maybe some more browns in here. Just playing. Maybe yellow. And then, yeah, let's stick to that yellow. So light shining around. Nice and bright from the sun coming in between the trees here. Put another tree in there too, I think. I want it nice and soft. And then a little bit of green, brown, and just very loosely throw in. This is just a very uh, loose rendition. I want it very um, like there's. And let's put this along there. Maybe there's some vines growing down. <laughs> let's um, splotch a little bit. And then I'm going to take some indigo. And I'm just going to put this very loose tree kind of gnarly. And it's wet here, so the tree can be take on a kind of spooky look. So the more pigment you put on it, the darker it's going to look. I like that. Let's put a little bit in here too. Now my, my paper's getting pretty wet. You might have to stop. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's uh, dry this. So I want this completely dry before you put any more paint or if you're going to use markers or Indian ink or colored pencil, whatever it is you want to finish it with.
And I will, this is, like I said, sketchbook paper. So it's going to curl, but once you close your book, it's pretty flat after a day. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I like the sound of the crinkly paper. Make sure it's good and dry. Okay. So. I like her. Okay. So now, we can either go back in or we can use pen. Uh, could use more paint or colored pencils. Uh, I think I want to just add a little bit of paint here and there in the tree uh, just to even things up a little bit. So like maybe the tree trunk. have a little bit more definition. Just so we can see where it is. It doesn't have to, but I want to. You could leave it very uh, atmospheric if you want. I kind of like uh, putting different marks in and make some of these uh, tree branches a little bit for the leaves. Just going to put a few in, not a whole lot. I want them more, more suggestive, I guess. I'll put a couple in here, right there, a little bit of the green in it, here and there. Yeah, that's better. It's fall. Could have little things, vines, who knows. <laughs> okay. All right, and I'm going to use, I think, colored pencils. I like colored pencils. So let's finish her off a little bit more. So I'm going to finish her eyes. I always like to concentrate on the eye. And I'm going to use let's do a little bit of a glow in her eye. A little bit of um, orangey, burnt orange color. You want it fairly sharp, nice point, so you can get good detail. And we'll just put a little bit of a, might not, yeah, it shows a bit just on the very bottom and then yeah we could put some of this on too just around the edge follow those marks maybe it's a little bit of a You see it more, more of a shine in her hair like it's auburn. Good. 
go. I'll leave that out just in case I need it. And I'm going to put have this uh, cream color for her face, for highlights. So she'd have a little bit on her nose here. Oh. A little bit on her nose. Under her eye. Across her, her cheek area. A little bit. That. I could almost go with white. And maybe just a smidgen on her chin, just a tiny, like that, on the top of her ear. Uh, and a little bit in here. And on this side of her hand and her knee here will be brighter. Just a bit. Not too much. Like that. Yeah, that's better. And a little bit on the top. One little area above her eyebrow there. Or just underneath her eyebrow. Make that a little bit. And she's got a little bit of a turn on her face, so this eye will uh, look a little bit um, space far apart. It's the way she's turned. Smaller amount on the side here shows that her face is turned. Um, let's try this color here. I want a little bit. A little bit of color there and just around the top part of her her eye. And cheeks just a bit. Her little nose. That. And some white here. Okay. And she does have a little nostrils. So I'm going to take my one of my pens here. And just put a little nostril in, just by a dot. Not very big, just small. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. And then her pupil around that little dot there center. Then we can put a little uh, highlight also in there. Let's put, I'm going to put a little bit of a, a line where her mouth is. Like that. Uh, let's use this for, I got to sharpen it more. A little bit of a even out her lip there so it looks better there okay like that oh, that's cute um i think i need to shade her legs a little bit more so let's get that uh color out just a bit more
kind of a Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's a smidge, oop, smidge under her uh, knee here. Just a, oop, that wasn't good. There. And maybe right. Uh, that's better right in here and her neck needs a bit more it would be very very shaded there i think that's good for her little face maybe oh, maybe your little hand see this is what you have to do you go back and forth because i know that that a little thumb of hers be darker now you don't have to go crazy like I love detail as you know <laughs> uh, let's see what else can we do here let's do her the little princess waist uh, let's see I want an indigo somewhere or even a gray would do Let's do this dark gray. This is a cold gray. So it should be good. So just a bit of a mark basically I'm just gonna take that down there and give a little bit more a little bodice would have a bit more shadow you could do this with the uh, watercolor too, if you want to. I just can't help myself when it comes to colored pencil. I love using them. I want a little bit of a, even darker under there. That. Um, wherever there's a little, um, whoop, you like a little swirl in the fabric, there'd be a, a little bit of a shadow cast by the the fold. That's a real interesting uh, thing to to learn is uh, how fabric lays. If you're at all interested, let me know and I'll do a little demo on that one. Some people uh, aren't too interested in learning that type of thing, but if you are, let me know. I'm always interested in learning. I love seeing how things work, how to illustrate it, how to change it. It's so interesting. 
a little bit in here. See how adding more uh, value to your colors changes the depth. So the, the contrast is so important if you want to really uh, in depth, like it um, looks like 3D, you have to put in that work of doing the different types of uh, shadows. Just a bit down here, I think. And the little shoes would have a little bit more shadow around them. Because remember, she's they're kind of she's walking, so that's why it looks the way it does. Okay. That looks cute. Right. So in the tree, you can either leave it as is, or you could put um, all the tree bark in would be one, one thing you could do. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit darker around her foot. Maybe a path on the bottom here. That looks better. All right. And I think she should be holding a strap with some books on it, like a little, these sat, you know, those little straps you used to have in the old times. Uh, let's see. I think I want to do brown, but not too dark. So maybe... this and Let's do, yeah, we can just have the whole, no, no, I don't want the whole thing. Let's put burgundy maybe. Mm. Nice dark color. Nice earthy color. Let's try this one. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. So a little... Your book can be dark like this. That. And then just take this uh, gray. And we can darken around the dress area along the bottom here because it's a uh, shadowed that 
And then just a little bit in there. I think I need to make that satchel. I'm going to use some Posca. Oh yeah, I wanted to put a little glint to the, in the eye like that. Um, maybe on the tops of the shoes. It will help um, have that shine. And then mm, like that. That's not bad. And maybe a little bit on her lip too. That always looks good. And then on her, her nose and her cheek. And she has, I don't know what they are, <laughs> a little hat with little balls on it. That's an elf thing. <laughs> All right. And then well, we could put, let's get a, uh, a brown again. Just to put it back. Um, and we'll just make some little, could be rock. changes it just gives it like scribbles and then we could grasses whatever change your colors up get something a little bit on the uh, olive side just a little bit different doesn't have to be massively different just gives it a little bit more interest when you put more than just one um, shade of color you could also go back with your a watercolor if you wanted to. Put a little bit of this in there. There. Yeah, I like it. So it kind of gives that kind of spooky look going through the forest. was a suggestion of a tree. All right. I put a little bit of this in here. And I think that's good. I like it. All right. So there it is. So let's sign it. Well, not going to work. Uh, what's the date today? Okay, so there it is. So I hope you'll give it a try uh, for all those that are in my memberships on Patreon and a YouTube. There will be a uh, in the community page of YouTube. Uh, it'll be listed there, a uh, downloadable link to the traceable. And for Patreon, if you go on 
uh, press on traceables for search and it'll uh, pop up there too. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you on Thursday. Have a fantastic day, everybody.